Good, using the DeWalt power screed worked really well for us. That slopes, that's it has an inch and a half crown in the middle for the pickleball court, so it slopes up an inch and a half, back down an inch and a half. And we can still use the Viber screed with no problem. So 63 by 35, we're gonna probably give that in 30, 40 minutes. We'll check it and see if we're gonna get ready to bro. Hey guys, this is part two. Part one of this video was with us pouring this. I showed you how we did that with the new power screed that we got. Now this is gonna be a pickleball court, like I said in the beginning. We're gonna put the finish on it. There's gonna be a rubberized coating I don't know if they paint it on or if they spray it on or what they do, but it's going to end up looking just like a pickleball no court. I got a picture of that towards the end of the video. But for right now, what's kind of unique about this is we've never used that oh, little 30-inch lightweight power trowel you kind of see in the background <laughs> ever to finish on a job like this. Normally what we do on a broom finish is, and you can see the lay of the land there, it was kind of a tough, he had a... He had a rock wall here that was really high and kind of steep. And then on the other end, the, we had another rock wall that just dropped right off. So it made finishing this a little tricky. But normally what we do on a broom finish is we'd get on this with knee boards and a couple guys would be mag floating this out by hand. Today we, we decided we've had this little mini trial from Tomahawk for quite a while. I think super lightweight, weighs like 30 pounds. One guy can pick it up really easily. We just decided, hey, let's get on this slab about the same time we would to hand float it and try the little mini trial and see if that does all the work for us. And come to find out, it really did. I mean, the thing, it's not super fast, but it probably as fast as uh, one or two guys that would get on it and float it out by hand, whether you use the, the skids that we use the, or you use styrofoam or whatever to get on it by hand. Now this is a little bit early. You can see I'm walking on here with my shoe in shoes, so I'm st I step into these shoes. They're flat soled. They're a little bit wider than normal. Um, step right into them with my sneakers, and I can walk on the concrete a little bit earlier than I normally walk on it if I was going to finish this concrete regularly, like with a regular power trial. This is so. This is a little bit earlier, and then. I don't know, four or five handles onto the broom, tied a rope to it, and we're just kind of pulling it back all in one swoop there so we don't have any stop and start marks, just to make it look good. It's all going to be covered anyway. No one's ever going to really see it. Uh, the guy that's doing the rubberized the pickleball coating just said he wanted a broom finish so the coating would stick to the concrete a little bit better. Now the tough part about using a power trowel like this that's super lightweight is if you don't get on it in time, if you get on it late, something this with this little amount of weight is never going to get the bull float marks out. And you'll see down the end how I struggled with that just a little bit on the last five feet or so. But as far as right now, this is just about perfect timing. I might have, I might have been able to get on it a couple of Earlier. Seeing was, this was the first time ever using it on a slab this size, the timing of this was pretty good. And if this was right out in the full sun right now, I probably wouldn't have been able to use it all the way to the end. I might have had to get out a bigger power trial. It's just not that much weight. So this is real time right here. That's, that's as fast as that thing speed spins up right there. That's the RPM right there on full speed. So it's not like crazy fast. Speed up the video, it looks like it's going to go faster right now, but it doesn't typically go quite that fast. But again, one guy's out here doing the work of what normally what two guys would be doing, and I'm really not really working that hard. I'm just kind of moving that trowel around back and forth. So that's 63 by 35. I'll have part one linked below, so if you want to go back and watch how we got this thing poured, you can do that. Now a typical pickleball cord I think is about 40 by 22, and then there's usually like 8 feet on the outsides of it. That's how we come up with these dimensions. Now we can't 
this guy where he lives here he can't build a garage on top of this he can't build a structure on it because I guess it's too close to the road the setback isn't enough so the code guy said well you can just put an exterior slab here but you can't build on it that's why when we poured it we only made it four inches it's actually about six in the middle because it crowns about an inch and a half but he won't be building anything on top of this and that's all crush rock three quarter inch crush rock for a base under it we had nothing to do with the sub base um, the only thing we were hired to do here was we put up the forms we put stego Stego vapor barrier down, 15 mil vapor barrier. We put wire mesh in there. There's a couple rows of rebound around the edges. Uh, and then obviously we poured it. Now we're finishing it. This is, this finishing part here started about, oh, I don't know, might have been 30 to 45 minutes after we got done pouring. So this is still, you know, we started pouring around 6 a.m. We got done about 7.30. This is only like 8.30 in the morning right here that we're getting on this. Now I'm going, it kind of finished kind of backwards from how we poured it. We started pouring it way up at this end. And then we finished over here by where Luke's kind of washing up the broom. But because of the sun hit this end a little bit to start with, and that end, because of the trees, was a little bit more in the shade, it kind of finished backwards, I guess, if you want to call it that. Now, as I'm getting down to this end, again, this was the first truck of the pour, right about where I am right now. This was the truck number one. We had four trucks to do this slab. So as I'm getting down here, you know, by the time I get here from when I started, it's probably a good 20 minutes or so, maybe. 20, maybe even 30 minutes. I don't know. I wasn't timing it. But by the time I get down here, you can see I just ran out of gas. Um... The concrete's starting to firm up pretty good now down here. So it's taking me a little bit longer just to get the bow float lines out, making sure that the surface is, you know, worked up really nice, kind of kind of fairly smooth, but still kind of creamy for the guys to run the broom over it so the broom marks look really nice. So I think Tomahawk, this is Tomahawk's version of their gas power. I believe they also have a battery powered version of this same trial. I've never tried that one, but I would like to try it. If they, maybe, maybe if they would send it to me, I'd try that and get it on the video for you and show you how that works. But all in all, I was real happy with how this worked versus me having to get on there with e boards and wiping this thing out by hand. This thing was a hundred times easier than doing that, I thought. So I would, you know, if you do little stuff like this, if you do some boom finish stuff, this might come in handy. It actually has a lot more poles that go to handle. So I have like three or four more poles that are about, I think they're four to five feet long each. I could put on this thing. I could reach way out without even having to step on the slab if I wanted to. It just I probably could have done this whole slab from the outside if I wanted to, just walking around the whole thing with all the poles they got. It makes it pretty easy. So I'd highly recommend this from Tomahawk. And then you know, if they end up sending me their battery version of this, we'll try that out. Let you know how that goes and see if you think it's worth it to you. But I think this would be well worth the money if you do a lot of boom finish stuff for sure. You guys let me know what you think. You can watch right here. So right here on this very last little piece where I'm walking, it was firmed up pretty good. I was just starting to struggle to get the bull fold lines out a little bit. You know, I, I would have got them out, but it just would have took me a lot longer, so... Eric and Luke are going to just jump in with their hand floats and just kind of scrub them out a little bit. And then I'll just buzz over them with the, with the trial just to make everything look the same. But that is, that's 2,200 square feet this thing hit in, I'd say, less than 30 minutes. Yeah, we got some finishing aid, we call it. It's called Encore. Sometimes when the concrete gets a little firm, we'll spray a little bit of that finishing aid on. That really helps work it up nice and easily. Had to use just a little bit just to help get things done here. Then we're going to 
we're going to just pick this trial up, get it off, and then Darren's going to finish brooming it. Now, what we did was after we got done brooming everything here, we we ended up just taking out. We we did take out the pins. I think we, we ended up stripping this today, too. But what we did was we took off for about an hour, hour and a half, went and got something to eat, actually. And then we came back and we snapped our chalk lines and we saw cut joints in it, one down the middle of the long way. And then, I don't know, four or five across the 35 foot way. So we got all our saw cuts in. It saw cut really nice. The saw joints looked really good. And then we got the actually got the pins out, got the forms all stripped today. So we were completely 100% done here today. And it was about, I think we finished up around 1.30 in the afternoon. So not too bad. Now there's a company called Marion Brush. You could Google it. They make a really cool broom system that would have worked really good here today. If I had had one of them, maybe they'll send me one after watching this video. Um, it's actually two brooms that they hook together. I think they're about a couple feet apart. So two brooms that look just like this, or very similar to this. They hook together, and then you can hook a rope to each end of the broom. So one guy can be pulling it one way, and then... You know, you wouldn't need all these handles like this. You wouldn't need any of the handles. One guy pulls it one way. The broom kind of tapers itself as you're pulling it. And then you just pick it up, you set it over. And then the other guy pulls it back the other way with another rope. And the broom re-tapers itself. So that's a really cool system from Marion Brush. And I wish I would have had it on this. That would This would have been the perfect type of slab for that. So you can check that out, Google them, Marion Brush, and they got all kinds of different brooms on there for brooming concrete like this. And this is, what the broom we're using is just typical concrete broom you can get just about anywhere. Um, it's the one that we've used the most, but they have some other different types of finished like hairs on the brooms for different situations that would work really nice. And that is the last pass with the broom right there. We got it all broomed. So I thought it, I thought it really looked good. Oh, Again, this coating is going to completely cover all the concrete. I, and I got a picture coming up here at the end about kind of like what a pickleball ball court would look like. But Luke and I are just touching up the edges a little bit. We did, we did run an edger tool around the edges just to round them and make them look really cool, really nice. And then uh, you know, we're just finishing up this very last little piece where things were a little bit firmer than the rest. But all in all, things went really well here. All right, so we broke out our little mini tomahawk power trial to get that all floated out instead of doing it by hand. It worked pretty good. 63 by 35, so all that square footage and that thing did it. For the most part, it did it really good right up until the very end. So uh, again, just broom finish. We're going to saw cut some joints in that. And then he's putting a rubber coating over it, painting that into a pickleball court. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.